Good morning and welcome to worship at First Presbyterian Church in Woodstock, Illinois. It is a joy to be with you virtually. This week we have a birthday, Hunter Johansson on Thursday, and an anniversary, Paul and Vicki Thuma tomorrow. Next week uh, we will be serving communion, so please uh, think ahead and prepare elements to take at home. And uh, we will also have a fellowship time after worship on Zoom. We're going to try something new and have a breakout room if you want to just stay in and, and chat or if you want to go into a breakout room and play games for all ages. I think charades are on, is, uh, on cue. Uh, please keep in your prayers Carol, who is Gildis's mother, who is ill, and uh, today, uh, we give thanks for Al Dunker and his sharing, sharing his musical gifts. Let us worship God. The people of God were made for worship, to sing and to praise, to laugh and to dance. The people of God were made to live in God's presence. Come, holy people. God's chosen disciples gather for worship, gather to praise God. Let us pray. Living God, we know in our heads that you are with us. In this time, help us feel your presence deep down in our souls. Hold us in your strong hands so tightly that we never doubt you are with us. Amen. The Lord knows the deepest part of you in Christ's light shines in the darkest places. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our needs for his grace together. Please pray with me the prayer of confession. God, you know everything about me. Every word I speak, every thought I think, every deed I do. You know all of them, even before I do. So take a good look at me now. Look deep in my heart and soul. Point out the things that displease you, the thoughts and actions I need to change. Show me how to live as you want me to live. Oh God, you search me and you know me. All my thoughts lie open to your gaze. When I Ever the maker and keeper of my days. You know my resting and my rising. You discern my purpose from afar. And with love everlasting you beseech me in every moment of life or death you are God of my present my past and future too Hear these words of assurance of pardon God is your creator and declares that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Trust that the grace we have in Christ has not only forgiven you, but is also and ever surrounding you. Amen. Let us pray for illumination. Lord, tell us what we need to hear to be assured of your presence, your love, your claim, on our lives. Amen. The scripture reading today is from the book of Psalms, chapter 139, verses 1 through 18. Lord, you have examined me. You know me. You know when I sit down and when I stand up. Even for far away, you comprehend my plans. You study my traveling and resting. You are through familiar with all my ways. There isn't a word on my tongue, Lord. 
that you don't already know completely. You surround me front and back. You put your hands on me. The kind of knowledge is n- too much for me. It's so high above me that I can't reach it. Where could I go to escape your spirit? Where could I go to escape your presence? If I went up to heaven, you would be there. If I went down to the grave, you would be there too. If I could fly on the wings of dawn, stopping to rest only on the far side of the ocean. Even there, your hands would guide me. Even there, your strong hand would hold me tight. If I said, the darkness will definitely hide me, the light will become the night around me. Even then, the darkness isn't too dark for you. Nighttime would shine bright as day because darkness is the same light as you. You are the one who created my most inner parts. You knit me together I was still in my mother's womb. I give thanks to you that I was marvelously set apart. Your works are wonderful and I know that very well. My bones weren't hidden from you when I was being put together in a secret place. When I was being woven together in the deepest parts of the earth. Your eyes saw my embryo and on your scroll every day was written that was being formed for me before any one of them had yet to happen god your plans are incomprehensible to me their total number is countless if i try to count them they unnumber the grains of sand if i came close to the end i still be with you the word of the lord Thanks be to God. This psalm has been put to use in defense of particular points of view. Words like embryo and womb cannot really help but raise thoughts of the political divisions of our day. You might hear echoes of Lady Gaga singing, Born This Way, and quote a few verses in support of those who don't fit into our traditional definitions of normal. The psalmist seems to have a political message in the verses that follow what we have read today. If only, God, you would kill the wicked. But today, let's listen to these words, not to tell someone else or God what to do or think, not to condemn or to destroy. Let's sit for a bit with a message of who God is and who we are, who we are in relation to God. The words of this psalm offer us a wonderful opportunity, rare in scripture, to picture God with feminine imagery, to picture God as a mother. Of course, God isn't male or female. God took on bodily form in Jesus. The Messiah had to come as either a male or a female because that's how human bodies work. But God is more than human and cannot be contained in a finite body. If we try to trap God in a male body or a female body, we make God way too small. God is incomprehensible. Knowledge of the divine is too much, unreachable for us. So we use metaphor to glimpse God and to marvel at God's love for us. All metaphors are incomplete, corrupted even by the brokenness of this world. Language either of either father or mother presents challenges to those who had a parent who was physically or emotionally absent or whose behavior was abor- ab- abusive. Yet we carry with us deep knowledge of what we need from a parent, even as no parent is able to live up to this standard fully. The psalmist assures us that, ga- that God can. So we listen for words of comfort in Scripture. I had a firefighter tell me once that if the only thing we did in worship was the prayer of confession and the assurance of pardon, that would be enough. When we were talking, he had recently responded to a particularly horrible call. He was wrestling with feelings of inadequacy and guilt over his failure to rescue a child. To be reminded that God knew him thoroughly, what he does, 
all his plans, where he goes, the times he doesn't go, every word on his tongue. To know that he was known completely and still forgiven was what he desperately needed. To be known completely by another human being, on the other hand, might be a terrifying thought. We long to be close to another, to have someone with whom to share our innermost thoughts. But everything? We don't even want our mother to know everything. Maybe especially our mother. Sure, when we are all grown up, we might confess to childhood missteps that blessedly went unnoticed. But there are probably a few things we wisely keep to ourselves, despite faith that she would love us all the same. Why mess with her delusion that her children are near perfect? But nothing escapes God's notice. God surrounds you front and back. Her hand is on you always. That kind of knowledge is too much for me. It is so high above me that I cannot reach it. We have to struggle to believe. We have to be reminded through prayer and scripture and worship over and over again that it is true. There is nothing we can do, say, or think that will chase God away. In fact, there is nowhere we can go on earth or in heaven or in hell to get away from God's spirit or escape her presence. If I could fly on the wings of dawn, stopping to rest rest only on the far side of the ocean, even there your hand will guide me. Even there your strong hand would hold me tight. Margaret Wise Brown wrote a beloved children's book, The Runaway Bunny, and I cannot help but think of that when I read this psalm. In that book, a little bunny threatens to run away from his mother, and she tells him she will run after him. A little bunny says he will become a rock on a mountain, but she will be a rock, a mountain, a rock climber and climb to him. The bunny will become a crocus and hide from her, but she will become a gardener and find him. He will become a sailboat and sail away, but his mother will blow him where she wants him to be. If he flies away on a flying trapeze, she will walk a tightrope to get to him. If he runs home, she will become a mother and catch him in her arms and hug him. In the end, he's shucks, he says, I might as well stay where I am and be your little bunny. You can try to hide from God, but God will find you. You can run, but God will chase after you. You can do crazy stuff, but God will do even crazier things to bring you home. In our darkest hour, God's light will shine as bright as the day on you. In the Hebrew language, the word for womb, the place where your innermost parts were formed, is rahem. It is the same as the word for compassion, for mercy. And this makes so much sense to me. The one who knit you together in a secret place knows you and loves you uniquely and powerfully. You are God's child. Your innermost parts are divinely created, seen, known, wonderful. You are loved by our perfect Mother God, held for other, forever in her loving arms. Even at the very end, you will still be with God, still be loved by God. Know this. Run home to her and jump into her arms. Amen. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low?
Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. Ooh, oh, you say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. You say I am held when I am falling short. And when I don't belong, Oh, you say I'm yours, and I believe, oh, I believe what you say of me, I believe. The only thing that matters now is everything you think of me. In you I find my worth, in you. feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. You say I am held when I am falling short. And when I don't belong, oh you say I am yours. And I believe, oh I believe what you say. Taking all I have and now I'm laying it at your feet You'll have every failure, God You'll have every victory Ooh, oh. You say I am loved When I can't feel a thing Strong when I think I am weak. You say I am held when I am falling short. And when I don't belong, oh, you say I am yours. And I believe, oh, I believe what you say of me. I believe, oh, I believe. Yes, I believe what you say of me, I believe. Let us pray. Mother God, we give you thanks for creating us in your secret place and holding us in your arms. We thank you for surrounding us with your love. We give you all praise for chasing after us in Christ, who gave all to bring us home. This day we pray for the entire creation which you have formed and love. Heal this planet and teach us to steward it well. Heal all who are sick and injured this day. Hold those who are at the end of life tightly in your loving arms. Heal the divisions between your children. Give us the language of cooperation and make us your co-creators in peace. Be with this church. Bless the pastor nominating committee and all its conversations. Bless the pastor whom you have chosen to serve this congregation as it continues the journey for which you have created her. Bless our plans for the near future. As the pandemic begins, we pray to ease. Give us wise discernment as to when and how to come back together. Hear these prayers and all the prayers on our hearts, which you know well. And now we pray together with the words Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
And now go out this day knowing that God is before you and behind you, that Christ's love surrounds you, and that the Spirit is flowing through your inmost parts. And be at peace. Amen.